This lesson goes over insertion sort. It's another way to sort values in a list, uh, and it is uh, more sophisticated than bubble sort. Doesn't mean it's better than bubble sort, but it is uh, a bit more uh, complicated, and the algorithm uh, is more sophisticated looking. So let's take a look at this. We're going to be taking each value in the list and placing it in the correct position. Uh, so one at a time. So we're going to start with the value on the left, and that's the 4. And it's just going to be placed where it is. It doesn't have anywhere to be placed. In, in each step of, of insertion sort, you're going to be taking the value and placing it in its correct position in the already sorted list. You're going to be inserting it. And you can see that <coughs> we have this thing called a partition. So the partition is a divider. Everything to the left of the partition is sorted with respect to whatever is on the left. Everything on the right is kind of like in the wilderness or in the wild. It hasn't been looked at yet. So here's the first real step of insertion sort where we take this three and we need to put it in uh, a position uh, so that it's sorted with respect to four. So it's going to go in the location zero. So I want you to always think about this as terms of in terms of locations. In the first line, 4 is in location 0, 3 is in location 1. 3 is compared to 4 and seen that 3 is smaller than 4. So we're going to shift 4 over and put 3 in location 0. So now, every th now we move the partition line over, and then that's the end of the first major uh, step. And now we can see everything to the left of the partition has been sorted. Now we're going to take the 100, and we're going to take this 100 here, and um, I don't like the way this is done. This should be going right in the middle because it is going right where the 4 is. There we go. So the 100 has to be placed in the correct location so that everything is sorted with respect to uh, things on the left side. So the 100 goes, uh, actually, that's not where the arrow goes at all, is it? Where does the 100 go? The 100 goes... No, it just stays where it is. And then the partition gets moved over, right? Because the 3 and the 4 are both less than that. So the 100 sees that, and it just stays where it is. The partition gets moved up. Now we're going to compare the 12. We're going to take the 12 and place it where the 100 is, because it has to go between the 4 and 100. Don't ever write the arrows in between. Write them so that they're actually pointing to a particular cell. Because remember, you can't place an item in between cells. We can't do that in any programming language. So even though that makes sense to our human eye, uh, if you're thinking about blocks or th something like that, or cutouts, that 12 has to be placed where the 100 is, and the 100 goes where the 12 was. They're kind of being swapped. The partition goes up. Now we get a 10, and where does the 10 go? The 10 goes, uh, well, where the 12 is right now, because if it was to go where the 4 was, that wouldn't work out, because the 4 is too small. The 12 is the first value that's too large, so we're going to be uh, putting the 10 over there. The 12 and the, and the 100 gets shifted up. And then the partition moves up again, and where does the 33 go? It goes where the 100 was, and the 100 goes in its place. So that's insertion sort. At each step, we're inserting the value at hand, the value that's right after the partition, in its correct place within the already sorted list. By the end of this... Uh, by the time the partition goes all the way to the right, there are no values to the right of the partition. All the values are to the left, so therefore, by definition, the list is sorted. Let's look at another example. So in this example, there are the values. We write the partition line because the 9 doesn't have anywhere to go. We're going to find out where the 2 should go. So should the 2 stay where it is, or should it replace where the 9 is, and the 9 gets shifted up? And in this case, the 2 goes where the 9 is, the 9 gets shifted up. The 8 goes where the 9 was, and the 9 gets shifted up. Now let's look at this third line here. The partition is just before the 4, so we'll consider the 4. And we will, this is an arrow here. Where does it go? Um, it's going to go, not where the, t it's going to go, it has to go somewhere between the 2 and the 8. Uh, so our algorithm should say, find the lowest value that is still larger than the, f than the value we're looking at, than the 4 and place it there and then shift everything up. And that's what we're doing. So the 4 goes there, the 8 and the 9 gets shifted up. The 100 stays where it is. So 
maybe this arrow should look like that instead. And where does the zero go? The zero goes all the way to the end and all the other values get shifted up. Now the shifting is actually uh, an expensive operation, meaning that it takes a lot of steps. It takes a lot of steps to shift all this over. Okay, so this is why, and we're gonna find that out, bubble sort and insertion sort are equally uh, good algorithms, or I wanna say maybe equally bad algorithms. They are not that efficient. Uh, there are other more efficient algorithms that will that you learn later on. The grade 12s will be learning one of them. But as far as time and how many steps it takes to sort these algorithms, and when you go into uni if you go to university, uh, maybe even college, I don't know if what they do this in college, but computer science, one of the really important parts of computer science is taking these algorithms, algorithms and determining how many computational steps it takes on average to perform each sort. And we also talk about, um, in computer science, how many steps it takes in the worst possible scenario. So using insertion sort, uh, let's say that the list was in the, the worst possible starting position. How many steps can we expect with, re uh, with respect to n? So remember, n is the number of items in the list. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So n equals six. And you can, there's a function. Uh, that takes n and determines that uh, it's actually an n squared algorithm. So insertion sort and bubble sort are actually called n squared algorithms, meaning however uh, number of values in your list, square that value, and that's the number of steps, computational steps, that it could take to sort it in the worst possible case. So with six, we could expect in the very worst, 36 steps. But keep in mind, it's not just this whole thing of shifting it down uh, or, or placing it in the correct spot. We have to shift every single value and each one of those shifts is a step. Okay, It's easier for RI to see it though. So that's insertion sort and that's the end of this short lesson.